Well, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Fort Church on a night that's gotten a little bit chillier than it was this morning, but it's a beautiful night to be here um, to hear the Word of God, Son, that we may reflect on the birth of the Christ child. Um, I'm Pastor Jim here at the church, and we are being led tonight by Linda Shiflett, our uh, music director, and by my wife, Courtney Joyner, on the piano. And we have a wonderful choir that's been working for months here. And so we are, uh, they, I know, are very glad uh, for all of y'all to be here to hear this. They've worked very hard, and I know it's going to be a wonderful program this evening. So, and uh, yes, Linda reminded me. Go ahead and take it out of your pocket. And we're going to go ahead and turn that volume all the way off. Not even vibrate tonight, okay? Make sure it's off. This is the story of Christmas, a story that must be told in every time and in every place, to all people in every land. It's the story of Christ coming to this world from heaven 2,000 years ago. It's the story of truth, that God loved people so much, he sent his son Jesus to save us from our sins. A baby in a manger would become a sacrificed lamb, but the sacrificed lamb on the cross would rise to become the living Lord. Many have turned from this truth, refusing to believe the story. But we believe the story is real. The story is truth. Jesus is the story. Jesus is the truth. We want to tell the world the story. To tell our friends and families that God's greatest gift of love was given to this world at that first Christmas. We believe it's true. This is the story of Christmas. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed.
God from God. God knew we needed a way back to Him. For centuries, we had longed for a Savior. We expected a king. Not a baby in a manger, born of a folk. Not a simple son of a carpenter, who worked beside his dad and loved his mother. Not a renegade miracle worker, who healed on the Sabbath and hung out with the wrong crowd. Not an obscure prophet, who would bring a kingdom you couldn't see, overturn tables in the temple, and collect a ragtag team of disciples made of fishermen and tax collectors. It wasn't what anyone expected. But then, God's ways covered to our ways. Sin had separated us from God. You and I are just like the first man in the world. We have rebelled and gone in our own way. We still long for that lost relationship with God. Our souls thirst for true fellowship with a loving God. We believe the story. We, be we believe the story is not just a story. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. A virgin will be with a child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. We believe the story of the Messiah we long for, Jesus, Emmanuel.
God knew that Mary was a woman of rare strength and obedience. She was the only human being to be with him, with Jesus, throughout his entire life, from his birth until his death. She gave birth to him as her baby and watched him die as her Savior. Mary also knew the scriptures. When the angel appeared and told her the baby would be God's son, Mary replied, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Everything inside me. 
given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end.
morning when she kissed her newborn child, she wasn't just kissing a baby, she was kissing the face of God. But did she know about the beatings? Did she know about Gethsemane? Did she know about the cross? Did she know about the resurrection? Aren't you glad God gives us just enough light to take the next step? He doesn't tell us everything that lies ahead. He gives us just enough information to spark our interest, to encourage us to follow. And the life-changing events he keeps to himself until we're ready for them.
genealogy about his birth. Jesus was born in a lonely, dark stable among animals and nearby shepherds. The world barely knew about this event that would change all time and life. There were no colored lights, no Christmas carols, no Santas, no snow, and no presents, except the most important gift of all. What God did on that night is beyond comprehension. Through his son, he came to earth to reveal what could not be seen by the naked eye, what could not be understood through the rational mind. He showed the world a hope that could be only the experience through the heart by the power of his grace and love.
I may just take a, a minute of, of privilege here. I just want to say, I've been sitting here thinking about what we're hearing. And, you know, I think a lot of us may have come here tonight thinking we were going to see a performance. But you know, there's a difference between a performance and worship. In performance, it's the notes on, on that are sung, you being just right, the words being perfect, perfect, being said with perfect diction, the chords being just right. It's what matters, right? But with worship, it is the tearful eye, it's the tingle in the spine that you get and you hear. It's the pondering thought. It's the attention paid. Y'all elevated it tonight beyond a performance. I mean, I saw it as I watched folks out here. It was worship. Amen. And so we thank you for leading us to worship tonight. Amen. Let's give another round of applause. Let it be with us according to your word. 